Now guys, I love manipulation. I use it in clinic, I teach it across the world, and I find it's a really, really effective therapeutic modality. Bear in mind though, it's a temporary effect, yeah? But there are some fundamental misconceptions that some therapists have around what is manipulation, and some of the old theories that we are still clinging to. We're quite lucky, we've, we've spent most of last year writing a big research project on the neurophysiological and the neurochemical effects of manipulation because there's been like a paradigm shift. Back in the day, we used to be very heavily entrenched in this biomechanical theory, um, and now we're, we're realizing that manipulation has a greater effect on the central nervous system and on the neurophysiological aspects of treatment, pain reduction, temporary reduction in tone, and other elements. Um, but some of the basic misconceptions that people have from the back in the day are biomechanical fault changes. The idea that manipulation is able to change a biomechanical fault, and that's just simply not the case. Um, we're not putting things back in position, and there's no research to say that there's any lasting positional change following a manipulative technique. So we have to make sure that when we're explaining the techniques that we're doing, that we're not saying to patients, oh, I'm gonna correct this, and I'm gonna put that back in. It's a fundamental misconception. So there's no lasting positional change, or there's no really good research out there to say that there is. Um, and also, I mean, especially with the biomechanical field, Theory. The, the idea of being able to palpate an area that requires manipulation, again, the, the research is really poor. Um, palpation is incredibly unreliable. Hands up, man, as an osteopath, I, I was told that I had magic palpation. But in reality, palpation varies from practitioner to practitioner, and it's an unreliable way to ascertain if there's an area of dysfunction that you think manipulation would be appropriate for. Um, ultimately, we always talk about you test it, you treat it, retest it. And if you are gonna use palpation, then what the research is showing is that pain provocation is probably your best bet. So pushing on the area, if it's eliciting a pain response, then you're probably on the right idea. But to really try and use your palpation to ascertain joint position and joint movement, it's a tough ask. And unfortunately, guys, the research doesn't really stack it up. Um, look, the idea that I can palpate one degree of rotation at L1, I can probably just about work out where L1 is. And that's hoping that the patient doesn't have any sort of spinal abnormality like an L6 to throw me off track anyway. So palpation is a bit flawed in that respect. It's still an important process, but don't just heavily rely on it. Um, and also things like specificity, being target specific. Look, when I use manipulation, my intention is to be as specific as possible, but ultimately, we are gonna have an effect on the structures above and below our target segment. And in the thoracics, it's really quite interesting because there's between a zero and a nine centimeter window of opportunity where you do a manipulation and you're gonna have an effect. 3.5 centimeters of error is roughly around it. So if you're thinking you're gonna crack T6 and only T6, Think again, because you're gonna have an effect on T5, on T4, on T7, on T8. Um, and so these are some of the sort of fundamentals that we see. Now guys, I like manipulation. It's very effective. And hopefully with the research that we're publishing, we're gonna show you that it's not just as simple as I'm gonna crack it and put things back in place, because we're not. Once we understand the neurophysiology of the technique, Guys, it's really quite a cool thing. So stay uh, stay tuned. Um, as soon as we get that published, we're gonna be pushing it out there and we're gonna be doing a load more videos on the neurophysiological effects of manipulation, all right? It's a great tool, but always remember, manipulation has to be used in conjunction with exercise rehab. And that's the same with all of your therapeutic modalities, yeah? If you're not educating the patient, you've missed it. If all you do is crack the patient, I think you've missed it. You've got to add an element of exercise rehab, yeah? You can't go wrong by getting strong. Movement is medicine. Get the person active, get them understanding the issue. And these techniques are a great way to speed up that process, yeah? Boom.